membership because the, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm sure last time around, Richard, I think you had one or two from South America, didn't you? Sorry, Tony, I missed that. Did, did, did you not have the uh, uh, people on for the, the, the last one with, with uh, Michael Finley from, from South America? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a long time ago, isn't it? Hey, guys. Yeah. S sorry to interrupt, but okay. uh, yeah, just, uh, we, we've, we've, we've gone live, so the room is filling up now. Um, I'll just uh, give a, a minute or so just to let everybody go ahead and get logged in. And uh, before I introduce uh, our panelists, I will just thank uh, thank everybody, you know, for 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 registering and and supporting this event. Of course, the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada. Uh, uh, you know, our our mission is to provide the best quality uh, of, of coach education and coaching development resources, and that includes. Uh, you know everything like this that we're doing online and 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 in person and and and, and all kinds of other benefits to to members and, and to coaches, both across the country and and and, and outside of Canada too, and uh, uh, you know we're 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 thrilled to have this opportunity to to put this little interview together. Uh, we'll give it just another minute here, just to see if we can get anybody else uh, uh, logged in. Looking like the the room is really starting to fill up. And uh, and then I'll uh, I'll go ahead and introduce our panelists and and, and get us started. <clears throat> All right. So um, once again, welcome to Behind the Bench, the NSCAC's weekly webinar series. And uh, this time we've got a real special one for you. The title is Remembering Canada's 1986 World Cup Team. And, and that's exactly what we're going to try to do here. And of course, that being the only Canadian men's national team to qualify for a FIFA World Cup back in 1986. And so uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy to welcome here the head coach of the team, Tony Waiters. Hello, Tony. Hi. Thanks, Richard. And, uh, fantastic and Tony Tony is also the president of, of the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada and he's been with us for for a long long time and, and of course we're happy to have him there and and we have uh, so for now we have one one of, uh, of, of Tony's former players from that team uh, who is currently the general manager of the Vancouver Whitecaps and that's Bob Leonarduzzi. Hi Bob. Hi Richard how are you? Not bad not bad all right um so, uh, Carl, we're, we're waiting on him, and, and, and we know, unfortunately, uh, we got a message very recently that, that, that uh, Paul Dolan is not able to make it. So, uh, you know, while, while we wait for, for Carl, uh, you know, hopefully to log on soon, um, I'll go ahead and, and, and just get you started. Uh, so this will be, you know, for Tony and, and of course, Bob, uh, jump in whenever you want. But maybe um, we can just get started with, with a little bit of your background in, 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 in the men's national team, Tony, as a, as, a, as a player and then as a coach, and Bobby also as a, a player first and then a coach. And, 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 uh, and, and once you've done that, you've introduced yourself a little bit. Maybe if you can talk a little bit about, you know, the start of, of qualification for the 1986 World Cup and, and what that was like. So maybe, Tony, if you'd like to get us started. Yeah, uh, but last year I went uh, back to Plymouth, which is the club I came to uh, the Wildcats from. And, and uh, um, it was the, a guy written the book uh, it was called The Way to Zero. And the five years I was there, four years were great. Uh, the fifth year got me the opportunity to come to Canada. And I got fired. <laughs> so, so, no regrets because it's been uh, uh, a, a, a very uh, um, meaningful time to me in Canadian soccer. And, and uh, uh, what I'd like to examine a little bit while we're here, I mean, Bobby's here, Carl, Carl will appear shortly as. Uh, 
where we go from here in the sense that we got to the World Cup in 86, but we haven't been anywhere near it since, apart from when uh, Bob Lanaduzzi was the national coach shortly after 86. And uh, uh, we, we almost got there. And in fact, it was the same formula as today. We would get there. So what can we do to get our team back, back to the World Cup stage? The other thing I'd like to find out and uh, ask you, Barry, and, uh, and, uh, and others is, uh, when do you think we'll be playing again? <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I think everyone involved in the sport and even people outside of the sport, when you look at the interest that uh, was generated by uh, the Bundesliga starting up on the weekend, even people that... Uh, don't follow soccer. We're following it um, with yeah. interest and, and, and hopes that uh, whatever other um, sports uh, they're involved in, you know, might start up again. So um, as for when we start up again, it, I think it's, it's, it's highly unlikely that we're going to do anything uh, even close to what it was pre-COVID-19, uh, simply because it's going to take um, the playing side, uh, being able to, to to actually get two games like they have done in the Bundesliga, but uh, beyond that, in terms of, of bums and seats, there that's not going to happen until um, we get a long way into the the uh, the, the processes that uh, are in place now uh, and and can and can ensure that people going to sporting events, you know, don't have to be uh, concerned about um, the virus itself. So I, I wouldn't even hazard a guess at it. I, I just think that the fact that we, um, that MLS are now in the midst of, of looking at, and it's, it's out there, uh, looking at a place like Orlando, Disney World, where they have all the, uh, the pitches and, uh, ESPN are are are, um, are owners, part owners of that, and can broadcast the games. I, I think that'll be great because that'll give people at least an opportunity to to see their teams on the field. And the rest of the world seems to be following suit. I think it's dependent in each of the 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 countries um, as to how they've they've dealt with the the virus itself. And some have done a much better job than others. But we'll be seeing. I think we'll be seeing games we just won't be seeing any any people in the stands uh, yeah. good 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 point and I, i'll just stop briefly because I, I see carl valentine is here welcome carl yeah uh, sorry about that you know as wingers we're very quirky right never on time as long as you move <laughs> fast though right yeah <laughs> well that was the only asset i had so yeah it's a, a trait of people from manchester <laughs> yeah i'll take that as well manchester winger a bad combination all right, and thank you for watching this short preview video from the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada. To see the full video, plus have access to hundreds of other coaching videos, blogs, webinars, and podcasts, plus free and discounted coach education courses and other soccer merchandise, plus to have exclusive access to register for all future NSCAC conventions, both live and online, Click on the link below to become a member of the NSCAC today. Also, please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as your continued support allows us to continue to provide coach education and coach development resources to soccer coaches across Canada and worldwide. Thank you again for your continued support and we look forward to seeing you at future NSCAC events.